All right. For this part of the lab, this is kind of a continuation of our fermentation lab. I don't usually do this in the lab because we're out of time and other reasons possibly. But um, I may do some other stuff with our end results. What's in this big five-gallon jug here, this is all the yeast and sucrose from our last lab, from the fermentation lab. Then I added some additional yeast at about another six liters of water and 600 grams of, uh, of uh, sucrose, sugar. And so it's fermenting. This thing here is called a vandermont. So the yeast to be more competitive. You don't want oxygen in there. If not, you get aerobic things growing, microbes and such that will eat the ethanol, basically, and out and beat the yeast. So keeping it anaerobic tends to favor the yeast. You get a little bit more ethanol production, and the ethanol will be broken down into anything further. So let me zoom in on it a little bit. So that's a fermenting bat. All those yeast are producing CO2, which is just as a stopper there. It goes down the tube. And I just got the tube in a flask of water. You can see it bubbling. That is the CO2 being produced. It's a pretty consistent rate of production. That's a lot of, a lot of carbon dioxide. So we'll let this go until it's completed. Basically, when the ethanol level gets high enough, it'll kill the yeast and fermentation will cease. And then we are going to take... The end products of fermentation, and I'm going to try and concentrate them because the ethanol, like this, at 12%, you know, it's not good for much wine, beer, it's about it. But if you can concentrate it to like 95%, 92%, somewhere in that range, then you can use it as motor vehicle fuel, uh, as a disinfectant, it's a 60 70%, because it's an hand sanitizer. So we'll try and do a little uh, concentration using a technique called distillation. I'll try and keep this still pretty simple. I'll try and use junk I have laying around the house. So, you know, if you need to, you know, this zombie apocalypse or something like that, uh, you could throw together your own still and uh, make your own ethanol or running your tractor, of course. That's it. All right. It is Labor Day, Monday, the, what is it, the 7th. And I'm just going to show you this is our fermentation vat from Lab 3, the Metabolism Fermentation Lab. It's uh, pretty much done. If you look there at the, the vapor lock there, there's no significant gas being produced. The rate of bubble formation is really slow. The fluid's still cloudy. What will happen? All the yeast are dying now. They're all going to settle at the bottom. It's a big mass of sediment. You can already see a little bit forming down there. So I am working on finishing up the coffee can still, and I'll run this stuff through it in the next couple of days. I'll run a video to show you the rest of the parts of the still, and we'll kind of do a couple of tests on the end results, see if it actually is ethanol. Take care. It's just a quick rundown of some of the parts I used for the still. It's mostly scrap, although I had to cheat and buy a few things from the hardware store just to save time. That big copper pipe there was a scrap. Found it laying in the backyard. Don't know what it went to. I bought one cap, and then I bought a male and female coupler to go do the piece of plywood and clamp down on it. There's one there. Another one up there. And I was going to try and make just all scrap, like the condenser. That's this big, long pipe right here. I was going to try and just use an old condenser off a broken fridge and freezer. But to save time, I just use a scrap piece of pipe. There's some all thread to tighten the, uh, the angle iron and the plywood down on the coffee can. Uh, you could use the, some fencing wire and a nail to pull it shut, you know, pull it tight. Anything would generate tension. And parts on the left here, these are just a couple of scraps of angle iron to be at the bottom of the can because it'll be under, you know, some flame. So, of course, I couldn't use wood. And the last bit there is the coffee can. It's a five-pound coffee can. Lid cut off because, of course, I got the coffee out. And uh, we'll just see if it works. I'll, I'll assemble this thing in the next bit and then after that we'll put our fermentation products in there and see if we get any ethanol out so that's it we'll see if it'll go take care all righty this is going to be the assembly portion of the video uh, what i've got here this is our fermentation material from the fermentation lab it's done uh, no more CO2 being produced, so I'm going to assume, hopefully, there's about 12% ethanol in here. Now, we're going to use distillation 
to separate the ethanol from the water because 12% ethanol won't make good hand sanitizer, nor will it run your tractor. Um, so we're going to separate the ethanol from the water based on your boiling point. That's pretty much all it still does. And I've got my pieces for the still here. So real quick assembly. I've got my coffee can. I've got some scraps of some angle iron, a little bit of all thread. This is a lid just made out of plywood. I've got some silicon sealant on the bottom to make a bit of a seal. So I will put this on here like so, and I'll probably speed up the rest of this real quick. This is my distillation column. This is packed full of some stainless steel pot scrubbers, which they refer to them as plates in chemistry, but I need to get really high ethanol content if I'm gonna run it in my tractor. And if you just do a simple spill, like run this out through, this is a condenser here to condense the, the evaporated gases, boiled gases, uh, I'll get a lot of water mixed in with the ethanol. So I wanna try for you know, 80, 90% ethanol. So what will happen is it evaporates, it'll condense on that stainless steel mesh, drop back down, evaporate again, drop. So it's like distilling it many times. And I'm hoping what comes out of this condenser, because once the steam comes up here, it'll pass through this pipe. Now this is a short condenser. I'm gonna stick it in a, an ice water bath down at this end. That should condense all of the <laughs> gases into liquid, which should dribble out this end. And hopefully it'll be enough ethanol, you know, to run my truck. We'll see, but that's kind of the assembly. So the next thing I'll do, I'll take this, I'm gonna put it on a camp stove, fill it up with our wine mixture here, and uh, boil it off and we'll see if we get any ethanol. So take care, I'll add the, uh, the test run to the end of this video. All right, I'm gonna try and fire up the coffee can still. I've got our fermentation product from the lab. I've got the still set up. I just got a bag of ice on the condenser, a jar to collect things in. So I will start this, talk a bit, but I will probably speed up the video a bit because this is going to be pretty slow, I imagine. First, I'll take out this stopper with my thermometer, put a funnel in there, and let's see if, oh, generate a little gas in there. Fermentation wasn't quite complete. And I'll see how much of this stuff I can get in the can. Try that to start. <laughs> Fair bit in there. I'll put the stopper back in with my thermometer. So I can kind of keep track of the temperature. All right. All right. Let's 
some leakage there. We'll see how it goes. Is on. I'm going to stand back here with my safety goggles. If something plugs up, the can explodes. Yeah, I need a little protection. In fact, I think I'll go ahead and do this. Down off the floor. Drop the table. Oh. Go. Let me 
See that? There we go. We got something dripping out of the pipe. Into the flask. We've got some kind of liquid in there, and I'm going to do a quick test because if it's ethanol, it should burn. Let me put the rest of this over here. For test, there's some ethanol in there. You can smell it. Oh, you can definitely taste it. There you go, it's a burning, but it's probably right at about 70%. It didn't burn well, but that is an ethanol flame. So we concentrated it quite a bit, just not quite, as, quite enough to run my tractor. Although it's probably good for hand sanitizer. There you go. And I'll do some tests with the hydrometer a little later.